Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. Ladies and I'm gentlemen, Kenda. and everybody uh, in the whole world, no one is excluded. Maddie Smith. Hello, Maddie. Hello, hello, hello. Maddie, I was looking at uh, what you're up to, you know, lately. So much. And when I went on Google, I type in Maddie Smith and I see on the right side your pictures, of course. But this is a little embarrassing to say. Uh, the bio was about Madeline Smith, an English actress. She was a model in the 60s. She was into comedy and horror movies in the 70s and 80s. Is it OK if I ask you questions about that? Of course. Let me tell you, Keith, with every year I'm I'm diluting her her area of Google. <laughs> when I first started, she was all over it. And now right. we're sharing the Madeline Smith page. Excellent. So you your, can... <laughs> your husband, rest in peace, uh, yeah. was 13 years older than you. Right. And he, he passed away when again? 1948. Like, wasn't it like the 80s? Yeah, it was like the 80s. Right. I always forget. <laughs> She's dyslexic. It's 84. That's what maybe. I meant to say. 1984. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh... Maddie was like, when did old people do right. things? 40s, 30s, <laughs> uh, I'm guessing. The roaring 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I said she was in comedy and horror in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, she's not here to do math. Right, Listen. That's true. Listen, well, well, our Maddie Smith uh, is fantastic. A great, uh, great comedian. Hilarious online sketches. Wild and Out is back. Congratulations. Thanks. We'll talk about that. And the new podcast is called That Time of the Week. Excellent yes. job. Thank you. Love that title. Love it. Literally. Thank you. And you know what? Every single stand up show I do, every man brings me up. Her podcast is called That Time of the Month. I'm like, you think I'm that fucking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of course, every man is like, oh, I, I can't remember. Yes, you can, bitch. <laughs> you said, do you try? To, obviously, it's their fault. But knowing what obviously. they do, do you try to be clear, you know, weak, repeat it back? Or do you say, you know what? Don't bother. I'll do my own thing. I, I've seen I've seen these introductions. It's been done to me, too, where it's like, you know what? Don't worry right. about it. I could tell right. you not write it down or don't worry about it. Write it down or don't worry about it. See, I used to see lately. I've just been saying MTV. Don't even bother with anything else. <laughs> Because when right. you get brought up as that time of the month podcast, people right. think you're like, oh, oh, you know, you're like the period girl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember one of my first introductions I had, uh, you'd call it a blog, I suppose, uh, shite.com. And it was getting some popularity. So I would tell the host, I mentioned, uh, mentioned shite.com. Guy goes up there and he goes, uh, this person has a website, shitty. <laughs> what is it? Like a, a way to keep the magic. A way to keep the magic. Talk, <laughs> the fumbling host before you go up is one way to be like, OK, let me dig out of this awkwardness. Thanks a lot. Right. That is that is the worst because there's a cleverness in that time of the week. So not only does it take the cleverness away, yeah. it takes any. Uh, I agree. Everything. Anything, yeah. It's just like, oh, hello, walking tampon. What would we <laughs> What do we need to know about your vagina? Oh, and then you're a redhead. Oh, oh dude, oh. they're looking at the hair. They're like, is that red or is it blood? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Th things are coming from wherever, wherever, you know, uh, you were talking on your podcast about John Mulaney and how one of this one of your news stories. And you were yeah. talking about how uh, he got out of rehab. He, uh, he the, the news, of course, is that as soon as he got out of rehab, he uh, dumped his wife. Yeah. <laughs> Which a lot of people don't know this. The wife was also in rehab at the same time. She for was what? In, for uh, an eating disorder supposedly brought on by his infidelity. Oh, is that that was real? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were leading into a bit. Now no. I feel bad for laughing. I'm like, for what, Keith? <laughs> but, but wouldn't it be nice to yeah. like if I'm she being thought dumped, she was laying you up? Yeah, right. I thought I was laying him up. <laughs> if I go to if I'm into rehab also, and you're in rehab. When we get out of rehab, don't I don't know if you know how rehab works. Don't drop a bomb on me. Tell me when I'm in rehab so that my rehab coaches can rehab me. One hundred percent. So I would I would like to speak to the other side of this. And, I, and I, I totally hear your point. But if somebody dumps you right after they get out of rehab, oh, please, please try to understand. I think they're doing you a favor. Sure, but do it in. But I but I also happen to be in rehab. Tell me to stay a week longer. Cover my <laughs> right. rent for the next month. Right. It might be traumatic. I'm the one letting go of you going to strip clubs and not being shy about passing exactly. your number around in front of other people. Uh, you can tell me I might need a couple more days. 
right. the news that you're over me. Then you're dating Olivia Munn, basically a, a supermodel. Maddie basically. has a theory that uh, it's all a PR move. And that it's fake because we don't know how to handle sad dudes being alone. That's so what we're not going to want to see them do comedies. Right. I, I'm thinking that because you know what? The past few years <laughs> he's blown up in ways that all these people are like, John Mulaney the one guy who I'm like, that's a really good person. And now this right. whole rehab, the divorce, his team's like, oh, we got to we got to cuff him up to make him look like a good guy. He doesn't look like it. Wouldn't he look like a better guy if he was sober and sad and alone? Yeah. Yes. But old Hollywood, they don't think like that. Right. That's what I think. It has yeah. to be fake, right? I don't, I don't know. I, I think I, I think it makes him look more like an asshole, but I don't know. It, you know, there it is weird. These uh, we know what happens. These fake relationships that right. apparently affect the box office because they're so fucking stupid. I think, yeah. I think this is regular shit. But because we know we all know this one person, you know, it's the you know, like we had someone else had that this happened to and like bullshit happens all the time. But when it happens to someone that a lot of people know, it's like, oh, how did this happen? Yeah. I don't know. He's an addict who's just getting over his addiction. They they say that the first year after the addict becomes sober is worse than the rest of them. So enjoy that. Enjoy that, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy okay. taking that under your belt. <laughs> also, he's just a male. He's a male comedian, which we forget. While seemingly a nice man, all right. male comics are sus as fuck. Isn't this... your boyfriend? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Can't boy and you he's love. chained to the radiator. We right. can't let him out. <laughs> you mentioned on your podcast, it's it's those sober nice guys, right? Those quote sober nice guys you got to yes. watch out for. Yes, yeah, sober nice guys. Did anybody talk about? Did they talk about in the stand up community about John Mulaney and his uh, his nice nice guys niche? No, I haven't heard. He's one who I I don't know. I haven't heard anything about. I, there's okay. always like people who have like opened for like Judah Friedlander and Jim Gaffigan. But he's someone who I don't know anyone who's ever opened for him or worked with him. I think he's like a couple notches too far up for me. I get you. All yeah. Right. What are people I saying about Keys? People are saying what a fucking awesome guy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, no, uh, a German woman admitted that she faked her own wedding in an elaborate attempt to make her former boyfriend jealous. <laughs> he <laughs> wins again. Sarah wow. Miller, 24. Oh, 24. Uh, had a did a photo. Sh right. 24 did a photo yeah. shoot, hired a groom. It was a TikTok video went viral. One point eight million views. Uh, she's an attractive woman. It was a beautiful fake wedding. Uh, the clip posted last week displays a montage of wedding photos and a cover of Gnarls Barkley's hit song Crazy. Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> texted. Yup, I'm crazy. <laughs> she split from her former beau in 2019 and hatched uh, the plan shortly after. Her friends were the bridesmaids. Uh, hmm. She found out through. Hold, 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 hold on. Yes. She got other people involved and they oh, had yeah. to get matching dresses. And they, I bet she was still like a bridezilla, right? <laughs> the whole yeah, she's like, for my fake bachelorette party, we need <laughs> to go to Vegas. Right. This Your hairstyle has to look all the same, stupid and $300. Like, it's not right. real. It's fake. They have to believe it. <laughs> Keith calls the hairstyle stupid and fake. You're all $300. stupid. <laughs> uh, you, got, you girls don't look happy up there. You really, really don't. Well, it, I'm it, just yeah. thinking, what's worse, uh, this fake wedding or... Hey, I'm getting married to myself because not to lead the witness. Uh, I believe in the getting married to myself thing, because clearly you have a hump to get over. You need to have your friends wear matching dresses. You need to have the bachelorette party. You need to do all that. And then you calm down and you could focus on your life. Maybe because that's what it seems like to me. So go ahead and get married to yourself. No, My motive for weirder. getting married to myself would be getting that registry. You know, yeah. yeah, you you need a registry, you need a party, whatever it is, do that. Just yeah. register. And but it's going my bank and going through all that just to make an ex like yeah. upset. He's over you. He's been over you. <laughs> he's not going to see wedding pictures and be like, oh, boy, I shouldn't have left her. <laughs> he's going to be like, thank God she's I, wiped up. I didn't know you had this in you. Yeah. OK, you do you. I'm happy for you. She later admitted, of course, that's how we know. He found out through Instagram and texted me the next day and freaked out because he thought I was cheating on him while we were together. That, of course, wasn't the case. Yes, of course. I'm a I'm a psycho. 
Oh, she yeah, that's just, not the case. But she just won a little bit. She just won a little bit because he called to see if if this affected him at all. And if you're right. over it, you don't give a fuck. You're like, you oh, don't... someone else has crazy. OK, yep, totally. but maybe but maybe it was still doesn't matter. Good. Like maybe it ended up OK. And it's like, hey, this is interesting. You're married. Nah. I really nope. think you would just keep scrolling without yeah. any contact. <laughs> yep. Right? Uh-huh. What's and he going to... He's going to... Oh, I would have had your friends do a different hairstyle. I'm glad we're not together. But it, it, totally, yeah. Th oh, then she says, but he came to my house and wanted to talk to me afterward. I wasn't interested. What? Both of you are interested. You're both crazy. You're he both also, crazy. And I'm not necessarily taking a side, but he could also think, well, you're psychotic. Let me check if you're fucking OK. No, you don't go to her house to check if she's psychotic. That yeah, is you go psychotic. to her house to eat her clam. That's why you're going. <laughs> <laughs> he said I wasn't interested. She said I wasn't interested. So he wanted to come to us. She said, I'm not interested. So that's how she moved on. I got his. I did it to make her him jealous. Right. He, he said, hey, you're married. And I said, not even interested in talking. Mm -mm. Mic drop. I so am this, not buying this. And I think they're together now. And this is also a good plot for like a rom-com if it was 2007. Right. You know, <laughs> back in the Obama years when we had a lot of good rom-coms. That's so funny. Did we ever have good rom-coms? By why good, we, I mean, you know. Why do we, why is the lesson in a rom-com we always have to be more patient with men until they have their montage? Why is that the rom-com? <laughs> Literally, they have to go have sex with a really hot person. <laughs> And then come back and be like, wait, I like the ugly girl. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> she said, yes, I'm single now and super happy about it. I'm happy to be able to focus on myself. So the work is done. And now she's healthy at 24. This is no. why you just go to therapy. You drink your water, get eight hours of sleep. Don't do a fake wedding. Right. It's a little much. <laughs> yeah. Which makes me think of this. Better <laughs> help. Mental oh, health. Oh, yes. Oh. Great segue. And is a big fan. And who's more together than her? And I'm not being sarcastic. It's just the way I talk. BetterHelp is customized <laughs> online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't even have to be on camera if you don't want to. Uh, and more affordable than in-person therapy. I would assume it'd be the opposite because it's such at your convenience. But it's also for me, it was way easier to find a therapist and start sooner rather than later because for me, uh, one of the big processes or, and the delay about it is where do I find one? Do they take my insurance? Does this happen? Does that happen here? I scrolled through. It was such an easy find. And I was in therapy within two, three days. Yeah, this is uh, you can you, you'll find a therapist uh, in under 48 hours. Uh, that's fantastic news. Kenda had a therapist once from BetterHelp. Wasn't the biggest fan of of them. Click the button. New therapist. Now I was in love with this one. Picture having to deal with your therapist and go on a phone call. Yeah, I, I don't want to be seeing you anymore. Oh, really? How come? Well, first of all, you know, I've, I have talking and discussion issues. OK, well, call me Ariana Grande because thank you. Next. There oh, you go. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I'm so excited that that oh, came yeah. out well, because I was like, what's that girl's name? <laughs> Remember the girl's name or it's not as funny. It's Say it right. It. <laughs> call me Kelly Clarkson. Shit. <laughs> Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Keith and the Girl listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash K-A-T-G. That's BetterHelp dot com slash K-A-T-G. All right. We were talking about uh, Wild and Out being back. Yes. Very exciting for everybody. The season just ended, right? So, yeah, season just ended and we're going back to film in June. So oh. in one week, going over to L.A. Wow. to film. Good. They're making up for that pandemic time. Making up for the pandemic time. Yeah. We're doing a little COVID bubble action. So how does that work? We get it's kind of like the NBA. We get there, isolate for four days, test negative, And then everyone who's in the bubble can't leave the bubble till we're done. How long is that? Uh, fi we're going to film everything in nine days. So Do you have a backyard. Can you go outside? I don't Where even groceries know. groceries coming from? How are they feeding you? Literally, are you going to die? Literally, they said, we get off the plane. They Our shuttle takes me to Target and Whole Foods. I get what I need. And then what? they leave me in the hotel. But they also said you can go for walk. I'm also vaccinated. Obvs. And so they said you can go to hotel, uh, like walk around and stuff. I think it'll be not too crazy. 
Are you allowed side pieces like the NBA did? <laughs> I, I got no. They said no one can come in the bubble. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So All I'm going right. to sit there in a in a hotel room for four days and then and then we'll film everything in nine days, which is pretty insane. What like, a, what really a really quick. slow and fast year this has been. It was it yeah. was about one year ago that Nick Cannon got in trouble on his podcast for making his racist remarks that he apologized right. for and got uh, reinstated back. But yeah, it was, uh, he, he, he was he uh, was citing Louis Farrakhan, which uh, you probably shouldn't do. Right. Might be known <laughs> anti-Semite. I uh, talked about how the Jews control finance. OK. Are you guys looking for a lot of things that rhyme with Farrakhan just to kind of. Yeah, does I've, he I've tell been pronouncing you no... everything that rhymes with Jews and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when you when he when you come back, right. Yeah. And when you when you did come back, does somebody say, hey, I know it's, you know, supposedly we really jab each other, but you, you right. can't bring up the Jewish shit. I think it's a given. I don't think Is they it? even need to tell us. Right. Okay. I don't think I'll be touching that. You know, <laughs> right. I, I know I'm just going to be called a Karen for 26 episodes. So <laughs> Happy let, to be let's here. let's distract with the white people, I think, <laughs> and go from there. <laughs> Happy to be that person. <laughs> uh, he did apologize, of course, two days after he made those comments. He said uh, he's taken responsibility. And uh, he's he's uh, only here to uh, keep learning. And uh, he, of course, uh, stole his job at The Masked Singer and uh, this. I was looking through the guests that have been on uh, while and out this last season. T.I. was on the very first episode. T.I. Yeah. Yeah. Did he uh, <laughs> drug or try to rape you or anything like this? Or was he a consummate professional? Nada. Not the T.I. was the only person who I didn't see in the green room at all. Like, I didn't even know he was there. He was like shut, like held in by his bodyguards. And then he was just on stage and then he disappeared. Okay. Definitely not a hanger. OK, good. Yeah, it's, it sounds by the news that it's best. Now, one of the episodes had Montel Jordan and Montel Williams. Now, was, be honest, yeah. did they make a fucking mistake? And they got Montel <laughs> Williams. I don't even like, know. It's Montel night. Shit. Fuck. Well, he, he's already invited. Montel Williams. When that happened, I was like, wow, this is OK. OK. <laughs> Right. <laughs> they texted the wrong Montel. I think right. so. And they He's both like, showed yeah, up. They're like, oh, shit, both Montels are here. What are yeah, we going to do? The, like, which one do you think really belongs there? The <laughs> Sylvia Brown lover? Right. Or this is how we do it? Honestly, I'll take Montel Williams. Yeah, all right. He's attractive, wise, charismatic. Although yeah, Montel Jordan's pretty hot. It, it did kind of bum me out, Montel Williams, having on that psychic that would uh, give these uh, mm. audience morons you know, made Which up one facts. Crossing over the crossing over guy. No, Monta Williams had his regular t talk show. Yeah, you know, it's anything goes. Maybe somebody's pregnant. Yeah. Maybe right. it's a look into, you know, uh, waiters. Maybe it's a uh, it's a Sylvia Brown doing the psychic predictions. And right. somebody would be like, is, is my kid still alive? The police can't find them. We're trying to make <laughs> peace with it. Yep, they're alive. Yeah. Really? Well, we're going to be stuck in our head for years now. Is that true? Yep. And yep. it is. Good sister. Like, what? The I know. Good luck out there. Yeah. Does his name start with A through Z? Right. <laughs> Ask you that. Cut the commercial. And then yeah. all these people are just crying. Like, what do we do now? The right. police were looking at the wrong person. Next person. Who should I talk to? Like, oh, hey, your grandma is speaking to you from heaven. She right. says your recipes suck. <laughs> <laughs> I tell it like it is. So sorry. <laughs> Uh, speaking of all this uh, anti Jew stuff, did you see there's new uh, Barat specials on Amazon Prime? I love how you spell you put the accent on the at. Right. Borat? Is that what you said? Borat. Oh, I thought you said like Bratz dolls. I was like, I, ooh, I, I, I love probably them. did. I probably did. Borat. <laughs> Borat. I did see the new one. Maybe he doesn't say it right. He pronounces everything wrong, right? Borat. That's true. Yes. Borat. Yeah. It's, it's never Keith's fault. Thing. Right. It's called Borat <laughs> Supplemental Reportings. And there's one. Uh, so it's kind of hard because the Amazon sucks so bad in its navigation. I, it's kind of confusing what they're offering, but they have like a 30 minute segment of outtakes from the latest Borat movie. Then they have and a it's not. I don't know if it's outtakes as much as it's stuff that I guess that's outtakes. It's outtakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Deleted scenes. It's like yeah. little X. It's little more deleted X. scenes. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's still cute, but not as good as the movie. And you can tell not as much money was put behind promoting it. Uh, I didn't then even they hear have about it. Yeah. Then another. And it's 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 funny. It's just it's more goofy funny. 
not as opposed to clever, funny like the movie is. I saw it and I'm like, I think we already saw this in the movie. There was one scene right. that we didn't see any of it in the movie, but the other scenes I'm like, there's a reason they cut this. And as much as I like seeing Borat and the sense of humor, it's sort of the I think the reason why it wasn't in there is because the joke had already happened. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, I think we saw this. And then they had there's Borat or Borat. I hope you download the right one. American Lockdown. And you remember in the movie, they he, uh, Borat stays with two two rednecks, two conspiracy you know right wing conspiracy theorists. They seem nice enough, but they're mm-hmm. full on idiots. That's why you kind of forgive them for the horrific things that they're thinking. And w- they cut it up with unshown footage and um, what do you call that? Uh, co- and confessionals and reality show style yeah, confessionals. Yeah. yeah. Re- yeah. And uh, made that its own like half hour show. Hmm. That then that that was that was cool. And then and this idea is cool, but I don't know who's going to find it or the people that need to see it. will see it after that. You can tell because, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen is on the right side of history and he's uh, he's an advocate, I would say. Yeah. And so he was nervous that the movie pushed these right wing conspiracy thoughts mm. and then it might confuse people. Mm-hmm. So he put to, so he had it sort of like like it minimized how like how dangerous this thought right. process. Yeah, and it gives a little that. bit more of a platform. If you're watching that and you're kind of stupid, you're like, cool. Yeah. Mm. And, and he's going along with it. He's yeah. anti Jew when he plays Borat and he's and so you could tell you could tell now how they got these two guys in the first place, like a lot during the movie, you're like, how did they? Why, why is this woman watching the little girl? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't even know, they yeah. don't even tell you. But here you can figure out that they probably most likely said, hey, this guy's going to stay with you during quarantine. Here's so much money. We're going to film it like a reality show because they did have confessions with the two right. idiots. Uh, then in these subsequent things, they sit the idiots down to talk to um, professionals in the field of whatever. And there'll be one seven minute movie about why there's not a, a chip in the vaccine. So they take each of the conspiracy theories that they believe in and they debunk them to them. Yes. A, and then they teach us what the conspiracy theory is and they teach why it's not true. Why it's stupid. And they okay. talked they talked to him nice enough. Like, I don't know if I'd be able to do that. But it's like, yeah. well, here's why you can't have a microchip in the vaccine. Right. Microchips aren't that small. What do you think of that? Adult that goes to work. Well, this is news to me. <laughs> OK, well, you can't change my mind about it. Yeah, but they can't be that small. OK, I just came around like in the yeah. in, it seems they got so stupid so fast they could get unstupid so fast. It seems. Then True. they, they not like baked in yet. These right. ideas are not, yeah. like they, they can't hold on to a concept, so they can't hold on to stupid concepts either. Right. I, you can't yeah. convince me that then another episode five minutes long is about voter fraud. You can't convince me okay. that this election wasn't rigged in Trump's favor and that uh, ballot boxes were really paper shredders. Well, <laughs> actually, it's been proven that this is actually the most secure uh, voting that we've had yet. And we've done mail in votes since the revolutionary uh, days. OK, I come around on that and done. But who's going to who's going to because they're all different episodes. Who's going to go, hey, let's see how Brad is making fun of me again. I you know, you know I, mean? I, I totally get your meaning. I don't think that they're going to happen upon it. Just like if we yeah. happen upon something that we disagree with, we're like, well, this guy's an idiot anyway. What I think might happen is the people who could be like, well, I don't know. They don't sound like complete idiots. The teetering, they might see the information or the children of the people who are thinking that way mm. or if I don't know how to express to you why this microchip isn't happening, I could send you this video that maybe yeah. Bentley tells you that it's, could it's be. At least, it's at least like staying on par with the other right. information or maybe like just like Maddie Smith has to keep putting stuff out there. Otherwise, that other to. bitch is going to keep coming up. That's well, right. 100 100 percent. You infiltrate the system. <laughs> I do think the Borat brand is in, pretty much ingrained in the liberal bubble. Yeah, right. it, it pops up when you Google Borat, I believe um, they had. And in one of them, would they talk about how uh, Hillary Clinton and the Clintons uh, eat babies? 
<laughs> and the two idiots believe Which that. Which is fair. That's sure. <laughs> they taste good. But you'd think they'd have better skin. So <laughs> Hillary Clinton showed up on the last of these. Uh, oh, wow. These videos. But she wasn't live talking to the idiots. And I get why. But I didn't like that because she, you know, she's like, I'll do it. But I'm not, I can't, my head will fucking explode. I got to talk to another fucking moron. And so it's just a video. And that that's kind of shows she's she's better than them, which, of course, she is. Uh, but it's like um, and these stories go about I eat babies. I thought she'd be like, does that make sense that I eat babies? What would right. I get out of babies? But she just says uh, that's hurtful to me and my family, and my friends. First of all, that'd be fucking hilarious. There's a rumor. Keith Malley's eating babies. Yeah, that's great. My friends would have a hoot. We'd be laughing about it. Also, people who spread that don't care about your feelings. Like the fact that it hurts your feelings is right. not my problem. That's not the way to lead, because yeah. then they'll be like, dumb woman with emotions. <laughs> she menstruating. Yeah, it must be that time of the week. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, I mean, fuck. But I don't even know anymore. She's old. <laughs> you know, they probably do get it every week, especially that. Yeah. that one on stage. Especially so she says, whore. oh, it hurt. It hurts me. Uh, these and you know what? Can't we find more common ground with each other? I think that would be good to make this country work. Thank you. And then okay. they they cut to the two idiots who got smarter every five minutes that went by. <laughs> and this time they look at each other and the one goes, I still fucking hate her. The end. <laughs> so they still made it funny at the very end. <laughs> Dude, honestly, the number one universal truth in America is that people just hate Hillary Clinton. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Not me personally, but that's the like microchip eating babies. They'll still be like, yeah, I hate her. But it did. It did. It did also go from like it sounds like scientists who are explaining this. Yeah. To, hey guys, let me say a lot of nothing and try to appeal to the empathy that you haven't shown any of, <laughs> and 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 not come to any conclusions or tell you why. And here's a woman face. And here's I'm a woman old, face. And <laughs> like people didn't vote for me because they think that I have my period. Like not. <laughs> maybe they maybe they wanted that to be the ending. Because right. That is the most hilarious ending. Right. Yeah, right. I, I'm like, oh, I don't like Hillary Clinton. And somebody says, oh, because uh, she uh, seemed to be against some uh, rape victims when she was a lawyer. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. OK, <laughs> right. I'll take that. Thank you. Uh, perhaps you heard uh, Georgia's uh, Georgia representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, a QAnon conspiracist. Uh, she is comparing wearing masks during the coronavirus uh, to the Holocaust. Yeah, I've just. That's good news. She believes in the Holocaust, right? First of all, yeah, but she doesn't believe in masks. Right. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> she says uh, being forced to wear a mask is the same as Jews being forced to uh, wear a yellow star on their clothing in Nazi Germany. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's insane. Oh, shit. Then she compared a Tennessee grocery store's vaccination logo on employee name badges to the yellow stars. Wow. I don't even know. I don't I at, at this point, it's like, is she just saying stuff to keep her name in the headlines? Does she actually think that? Or is she just trying to appeal to those like, yeah. But you still have to go home and see your family. Like, I couldn't <laughs> keep a boner, even if you said that for a million dollars. I know. It's so bad. I, I mean, at this Georgia, I got to say, Georgia. Who's your, that other representative that said the, the January 6th insurrection was a regular, uh, quote, uh, tourist visit? You just, um, you just know it's bad because it happened that day and that's the way it was spun. <laughs> These are all the people coming from my state. It'd be a little something, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get to Cuomo here in New York, but it'd be a little something. Uh, she said, sorry, some of my words make people uncomfortable. Marjorie Taylor Greene. But uh oh, first of all, that was not an apology. And she added not an apology. Total gaslighting apology. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're a puss. But yeah, sorry, you fucking asshole that I hurt your feelings. Sorry, you're on your period. However, yeah. right. But this is what the American left is all about. And they are America last in every single way. You, you couldn't, there's get, so you much couldn't get away with a school report with this kind of wording. There's so much emotion coming from both sides. It's just funny that only the left is known as emotional. When right. you're yelling, when you're running into a building yeah. that you have no business being in going, ah, that's emotion. Right. You know, ah, that's emotion. I will kill you. That's emotion. Your all minotaur outfit. Are, yeah. Are you <laughs> that's <only> emotion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is all of it is very, very emotional. In fact, we all get into minotaur outfits on our period. So. <laughs> yeah, we go into the red tent. 
<laughs> I brought up, to be fair, uh, Cuomo here, the governor of uh, New York State. I, I, I complained about this at the time, his book, American Crisis, Leadership Lessons from the COVID-19 Pandemic. And I hated when he put that book out because it implied uh, that this uh, virus is done and we sh- could all go about our way. This is about yeah. three fourths into the year. Literally, it was at like its height. Yeah. It was like the second or third wave. It's at its height here in New York. The balls to put out this book. I didn't even think about the money he would have made during this when he was also lying about how many people were dying in nurse- nursing homes. Five million dollars. That's how much he made. That's how much he made. Wow. And at that point, just quit because he's getting so (laughs) many people accusing him now. Why can't you take the money and run? Right. I don't like that he was done writing his book uh, by the end of 2020. So unless we're reading your literal diary, how do you have time to edit? Yeah. and, and, And reflect. How can you yeah, reflect yeah. when it's still yeah. happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The five days I was first sober, a book by me. <laughs> uh, yeah, this did, was just a Tumblr. <laughs> he d- dismissed the outrage over his five point one million dollar coronavirus book deal as, quote, stupid. I don't like that. Now I'm stupid. They really turned this around. Uh, he says it's stupid to complain about because I donated a chunk of it to charity and gave the rest to my daughters. Is that what you want, Keith, to take food from my daughter's mouths? Yeah, ch- man, let's see the chunk. Let's see the percentages here. I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you, it was five hundred thousand dollars to United Way and the rest to his daughters. What does United Way do? I think it's like a uh, conglomerate. An airline? Everything. Uh, and, the- yeah, they, he donated it to the airlines. They're doing they're struggling this last year. You put this book out, some uh, reporter said, but uh, 50,000 New Yorkers have died when you put this book out. He says, that's stupid. Next question. Later, they brought it up again. He said, I thought your qu- the question was offensive and stupid. I wrote a book <laughs> saying this is what we should learn from what has happened so far in COVID because we're not done and it's going to continue. And if we don't learn the lessons, we're going to continue to make the same mistakes. That's why I wrote the book. And by the way, that's what happened. What happened again? I couldn't write Literally, this what high happened? school report. Yeah. Here's the thing. I he's right. We can't get upset about how much money he made, but we can get upset. Well, it's just that him not having an answer for that as a representative of the person who speaks for us is stupid. Him going, thank you for coming, my people. And we're like, hey, we feel like this is an injustice. That's stupid. Next. (laughs) Right. You can have you wrote a book, which means you know how to write ideas that relay the information that you're trying to give. So what I'm getting is all the information you're trying to relay is that you're leading morons, which is insulting because we feel one way about this. And whatever we feel about this, if you're responding to it, respond with intelligence so that we can have some kind of good feeling about you standing up there representing us. Right, right. Uh, Kenda got her vaccine, by the way. She got the first uh, first dose. The doctor said it's OK, despite her myriad of conditions. Correct? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the only the only caveat is it's it's OK. It seems like people with uh, autoimmune disease, nothing special is happening to them. The only thing is that they don't have information, enough information about people with my disease to see if the vaccine is fully protecting them as much as it is somebody else. So I have to keep going on like I didn't get vaccine, but I already feel better better does that make sense i'm like mm. i think i think it is covering it we don't have proof that it's not covering it i'm still going to be careful but it feels good that people are getting the vaccines that you can feel a little bit of relief um i'm sorry ever- one second one second i'm sorry Hinda. as we talk about if you're gonna live or die is somebody doing construction in somebody's house i think there's a hammer behind me okay just double checking I think are you just stopped oh, okay just curious Okay, so we went, we biked over. It was like maybe a half a mile and we forgot to bring our chain. So we were just going to wait, go one person at a time into the space. I went in first. There's a little bit of nerves there. I don't like being pricked. You know, there's I sit down and the woman starts chatting up with me. Everyone's super nice. But she goes, yeah, I was a little hesitant about it. I actually didn't want to get it, but I ended up giving in because I was uh, I didn't like the alternative more. And I was like, wait, why are you telling me this right before? Like, I'm in a professional place where all you're doing is pricking people. And she was like sort of Mm anti-vaxxy and still sort of felt like she is, but sort of succumbed to the pressure of it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to let that go. And then um, she, uh, the, the needle is there and she goes, I bet you're wondering why the vial isn't here. 
you know, I'd be wondering that. And uh, don't worry, we're clean. We're, we're sharing vials, but it's okay. TMI. What? Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Why the, TMI hey, left if and it's right. okay, why did you bring it up? Right I, right. I didn't see the vial when I got my shot at the Jacob Javits Center. Right. Who cares? And I didn't I didn't know what that meant. And in my head, it started jumbling a little. I'm like, this can't be bad because she's telling me this and everyone's around and they're not busy. So yeah. it's. And she's like, yeah, because it's the end of the day. And I'm start thinking, like, should I have come earlier in the day? Am I getting the leftovers? Like, this can't mean that. But uh, maybe I should just get up and, and, and come back another day and start fresh. And, you know, maybe this one's an idiot that I got. And she's like, no, no, it's we share vials. And she explained it. And I go, oh, OK, I think I get it now. And she goes, I probably shouldn't have said that, should I? Oh, my gosh. Jesus. And Not I a go, good place to be quirky and like, <laughs> get Zoe Deschanel out of the vaccine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Our, bu our buddy Brother Love got the shot and the person said, uh, uh, Bill Gates, thanks you. Even that's more. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, that's oh not gosh. okay. So yeah, so she's going on, and she goes, I, "I probably shouldn't have said that." And I go, "No, you shouldn't." And I think it just fell out of my face. Oh. And and then I said, "I I just don't understand what you said," and it's just a little nerve wracking. But now yeah. I get it. Let's just let's just get this going, right? And then I, I couldn't help it. I'm like, I can't tell if this is a rude question or not. I asked her if she's a nurse. Because I'm like, is this like a voting place where like there's right. all volunteers, they teach you how to prick people because, you know, <laughs> uh, people take their diabetes medicine like that, their right. steroid shots like that. Like, right. so maybe you taught this one thing, you were taught this and you're not necessarily a nurse. And she goes, yeah, I'm a nurse. And yeah, I still had those feelings about the vaccine. I'm like, shut up, shut up and prick me. Yeah. Shut up, shut up, shut, shut up, up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> we're going to say something else. <laughs> Holy shit, right. be quiet. And then um, while that's right. happening. And it's like, I kind of wish you said no. Yeah. I wish you weren't a nurse. Just some indifferent shit, volunteer. But you know how to prick. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And while that's happening, um, turns out somebody goes outside, see that Xerxes is waiting. And basically, they're trying to get everybody in before you change your mind. When I walk in, they're like, do you have any friends who aren't vaccined yet? Like, they're oh. ready to, you know, give you the information to try to convince them. They're like, we're trying to convince people to come in. We're trying to give them the information. So... The person outside was like, oh, you're not coming in because you're holding on to these bikes. Wheel those bikes right in. We'll give you a, a, a safe spot to put them. We're going to watch them. Just go in and get your shot. So um, they tell me this so that, you know, I, I'm not going out looking for them. And I'm going to go, oh, that's really nice. And the nurse goes, God is good. And I'm like, just fucking <laughs> oh. give me my Band-Aid and Even get the worse. fuck <laughs> What oh, the shit. fuck is happening? Even worse than all of the things. <laughs> Bringing God into this. <laughs> Holy shit. But uh, everything worked out okay. Uh, they said in 24, they make you sit there for 10 minutes. And, you know, at, at first I'm like, I'm, I don't know if, this, if something happens, I'll just be asking, I'm like, what the, just sit the fuck down. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. yeah. So you sit down. Everything went well. The next day we did a couple of shows. We did last week, we did Keith and the girl. And yesterday we weren't recording and I fell asleep randomly. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, what work should I do? I don't know where to be. <laughs> okay, today we have a timeout. I am not doing anything that doesn't need to be done. Like I know I have to do these two things. Once I'm doing that, my whole thing is out and that's that, i think that was the only thing i got that fog head and yeah needed sleep same with xerxes so far so good maybe the second one will be a little rougher but um no one's dying that's the thing when people are afraid to get the second one you're scheduling a flu that's yeah. okay like that's okay. It's just a flu. You're not scheduled potential death. You might have to go to the hospital. You're scheduling the sniffles, you know, a little, a little more intense. And I shouldn't speak ahead of time because my sniffles when I got another shot was pretty intense, but I don't know. It's worth it. Cases are down a lot. No one's yeah. dying anymore. My mm -hmm. sniffles were pretty bad. I'm going to throw that out there. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to scare you, but it kind of sucked. What'd you get? Big, big day of flu like chills and body aches and and then all of a sudden it was gone you're like all right i guess i'll get up and go to panera bread i feel good do you That's think that I, how long was it a day two mine was one day yeah did, was, did that beat death do you think I, I don't at some some hours of that day i said this doesn't <laughs> this is i'd rather die take my body take my body and my soul but by the time you're done you're like all right we did it 
They have to explain that and that Barat thing, one of those three, four minute skits or whatever yeah. segments. Uh, they like, they explain uh, this. Uh, if anything happens with the virus, it's still much better than death. Yeah. With yeah. the vaccine, it's still much better than death. No, but that, okay, that's... good to know. Now I know you told me one sentence. Now I know. Good. Well, you know, a woman isn't saying it to them. They could finally. Right. But that that's yeah. what happened to me. I got a uh, what's the one for whooping cough because my brother had a kid oh. and I I threw up a whole bunch. Oh. Um, I was having trouble breathing. Uh, I almost went to the hospital just for like the amount of lack of air that was going into my lungs. So I th- that might happen, I think, with the second shot. And I'm still going for it because I know that throwing up is horrible mm-hmm. and then you're going to do it. And then maybe the air will clear. But yeah, just one day worse. you get your TV shows ready, get the couch yeah. and yeah. you know what? It's coming. How many times are you sick and you don't know why they're telling you why they're telling you why? Yeah, I, man, I think the it's fuck a, up. Take some yes. ibuprofen. You'll be fine. That's a relief. Or I say, wo- I say can. woman up. Am I wrong to say that? <laughs> oh, progressive. Thank you. It's Thank the you. most progressive when you point it out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Male you. feminist. <laughs> uh, I have a letter here, Kanda. Oh. It's for you. It's from Jessica. Very positive name. I like it. <laughs> the subject is to try or not to try weed at 36. Oh, OK. Hi, Keith and Kanda. I've been a listener for a while now, and I know Kanda started smoking weed later in life. I grew up Christian, so super religious home. Separately, some cousins were junkies, and I remember them stealing from family at Separately, parties. Separately, I'm sorry. Yes. It's interesting verbiage. <laughs> Separately than that. <laughs> some cousins were just... So you think that's enough not to be into weed? There's more. Some cousins were junkies, and I remember them stealing from family at parties, and drugs were always super taboo in my family. Mm. They were weed junkies in doing this? It doesn't sound... <laughs> I guess no, but... I steal my mom's Cheetos. <laughs> right, was it always food and snacks? Did you take the last ding-dong, you fucking junkie? <laughs> I did, but there's ho-ho residue all over the cheeks. And yeah. I honestly was afraid of getting into drugs and turning out to be my older cousins. Mm. The whole addiction thing seemed, and still seems, claustrophobic and definitely something I never took interest in to when I was younger. I would heavily judge friends who did drugs and was never interested in learning the different kinds of drugs out there. Now that I'm older, I keep growing increasingly curious about weed. My wife and I are best friends with a couple who smoke, vape, eat weed, but they've always done drugs. So I don't have a perspective of starting with weed later in life. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing them talk about not getting a hangover like you do with alcohol. And that's what's appealing to me. I've been drinking since my late teens. But I drink less and less now that I am older because I absolutely hate feeling like shit the next morning. So I have questions for Henda. Were you you ever scared? Yes. Did you abstain from younger because of religion? Not religion, but because of the fear Mm -hmm. in the upbringing. Next question. Fear. Yes, very much. What made you try it for the first time? Uh, I don't know. So, okay, let me. The reason why I tried it, I don't know. I don't remember the first time. It seemed safe enough at the time. And I think that's where you have to get there. So for me, if you haven't tried weed yet, that's okay. I started to smoke regularly in my 30s. Um, I tried it once maybe when I was 21, but I really tried it in my 30s. And uh, I'm noticing like you have friends that... um, smoke weed all the time. You seem to respect them, like them. So it doesn't match the things that I was told about weed. Started learning the difference between one drug and another, what the side effects are, things like that. If you're going to try it, you have to be in a safe space. That means what you think a safe space is, possibly with your pothead friends, because you know that they're going to remain calm. They know you're not dying. Also know you're not dying. Also, because you drink, you know what an alternate state of mind is going to be. So if you start panicking, remember that you're high and that you're in an alternate state and then you might be able to enjoy it. If you have high anxiety, that means you either live in the past or in the future. Pot tends to get you a little bit more present and that might raise your anxiety a little bit because you have to look at exactly what's happening now. That's maybe when you start you know, tapping your foot or people get a little anxious. That might lead to something. So if you're high anxiety, maybe take it slow. Have water. Have something in front of you to eat that you're not going to feel guilty eating because you will eat all of it. 
And when, <laughs> <laughs> when all else fails, remember, you're high. It's going to go away and you're not going to die. Wow. Uh, uh, Brad part seven explains how <laughs> nobody died from weed. <laughs> um, Maddie, do you smoke? You're not shy about your anxieties. Do you mess I got up? mad anxiety. And so I do little tiny edibles every so okay. often, like little, I'm talking like five milligrams and under just to sort of be like, uh, just to loosen up and remember, oh, I've been, I've been uptight for the past week. You know, the minute you get high, you're like, oh, I can relax. But if you get too high, it's over. So that's why you have to, I like the edibles because you can control how much you're taking in. Mm. Right. And Borat part eight explains how weed is healthier than uh, drinking. So, so much uh, healthier. Of course it is. There's no question. I, I, I said woman, I believe when I said Jessica, because it sounds feminine to me. It's interesting. Let's say I'm I am correct. Uh, then you're you're most it looks like you're in a lesbian relationship. That is uh, your uh, the religion said, don't do that. Mm. They didn't mm -hmm. say anything about weed. So you got the you got the real sin. You're, you made peace with that. Don't, don't worry about marijuana. God, God didn't have a thought about marijuana. Yeah, clearly we've been given information that doesn't really work well anymore. It's not as useful as they thought it would be. So you have to sift through what you learned and what's real. Yeah, yeah. we don't we don't do drugs here. Guns, yes. <laughs> Shooting people, of course. <laughs> Perhaps I'll accidentally uh, shoot a hiker by being a hunter. Okay, that happens. But Forcing no weed. women to have babies they don't want. <laughs> yes. That's what we do. <laughs> I'm afraid that I will get hooked. But from what I understand, that's unlikely. I feel silly because I'm well established and it just seems like that's something you do when you're young. As you can see, I have many biases around drugs, but now I understand there are big differences between them. I am 36, been married seven years to my lovely wife. We have a two and a half year old boy, and that is the most wonderful and tiring little human. After his bedtime, I just want to chill and not feel awful the next morning. Help. Thanks. The first time you do it, don't be in charge of that two and a half year old. Put that to like, mm. don't get a babysitter, even if you're at home, get someone you trust or maybe your wife is not going to be smoking. Not because you can't take care of a baby after you smoked, because you will start panicking about who's taking care of the baby and you're a bad parent and you shouldn't do this while the kids in the like get all of your responsibilities out. You're done for the day because most likely what will happen is you'll laugh a bunch and pass out. Like when I, yeah. when I say pass out, I mean, fall asleep. I don't mean like, Oh, I'm falling. Yeah. Let's <laughs> say you're going to get tired real fast. Food is going to taste really good. Have some grapes. Those are pretty good. Yeah. Watch family guy. Can, I would like to say something about the fear of getting hooked. I feel like if you're writing this letter, you're mindful enough to not get hooked. You're 36. You have a successful, strong family. It's hard to like, I feel like a lot of us forget that we are mature enough to not get hooked on stuff. Um, there's some stuff that takes that? you. I think if you, I don't think you have a choice when it comes to meth. And the thing is, is that's <laughs> shorthand. <laughs> but, but that, where it's not, it's going to be a bit before yes asks about heroin <laughs> is my guess. <laughs> yeah. But you're talking to a habitual smoker, meaning it's yeah. not like, um, I understand the fear of getting hooked. You will maybe get into the habit, but you're looking for something every night also. So you're already you're trying to find a habit. And if that habit doesn't, you know, affect you negatively, mm -hmm. otherwise, you can make that choice. And that's the thing with weed. I think you could make that choice. I think you can try it and put it down. Well, I do want to say yeah. this family, friends, the Mitchells, they tried weed for the first time, didn't have snacks, ate their baby. <laughs> oh, so yeah. did Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but that was deliberate. <laughs> that wasn't out of being confused. Side note, I am a huge fan of your show. Thank you for being real and an ally for us queer immigrants, women, and for using your platform for doing your part and bringing gold to the world. Jessica, sent from my iPhone. Relate, Ooh. relate, relate. Yes. Yeah. Get that bong. There you go. <laughs> and good timing to mention this, I think. Magic. Oh, don't you wait. I'm sorry. Don't use a bong on your first one. That'll hurt. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was just joking. I was okay. just joking. <laughs> Please. <laughs> they go out and try a bunch of, uh, you know, I have to get the best bong. I have to yeah. get yeah. the best grinder. They what grinder those, do you recommend? Um, <laughs> what if they made one of those massive gravity bongs that frat boys do? Oh, yeah. It's, by the time you figure it out, you're asleep anyway. So maybe yeah. that's what you do to calm down at night. Yeah. Just get into engineering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I was going to recommend Magic Spoon. Mm-hmm. Cereal oh, yes. was one of the best parts of being a kid. But you have to give it up, right? Because it's sugar and shit. Bunch of junks in it. Try to cut down on carbs, sugar, unhealthy food. Well, 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 what can you eat nowadays? Am I wrong? Hey. Come on. You can have healthy spoon. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs in each serving, only 140 calories a serving. Keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, GMO free. Exciting news, and I mean it. Magic Spoon has released a super delicious new flavor, birthday cake. I'm telling you, yes, that's what you put in front of you when you're doing whatever it is we just talked about. Don't worry about it. Birthday cake Magic Spoon totally. is available in a special five pack for a limited time only. Get it while you can or build your own box. Ooh. Make a custom bundle. You can include cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cinnamon. Are you listening from Canada? Well, fuck you. I'm kidding. You can get it too. Magic Spoon now ships in Canada as well. Okay, go to magicspoon.com slash KTG. Grab the new limited edition birthday cake or a custom bundle of cereal. Try it today. Be sure to use the promo code KTG at checkout. Save five bucks on your order. Good anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, but only when you use our code at checkout. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, They'll refund your money, no question asked. Then they're going to be like, Jessica, what did you do today otherwise? You know, they don't even care. <laughs> right. Money back. <laughs> Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash KTG and use KTG to save five bucks. Thank you, Magic Spoon. And uh, listeners, you are very, very welcome. Guilty free cereal. Yeah, that's what the new generation gets. We didn't have that growing up. Mm -mm. No, <laughs> that's true. That's yeah. true. We also didn't have guilt until a little bit later on. Mm. We just had cereal. It was accumulating. We just didn't know what to call it yet because we weren't yeah. allowed. You're like, I hate myself. I don't know why. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this is normal, right? What's going on? <laughs> now, uh, Maddie Smith, you want to follow online, OK? Her handle yes. is so Maddie Smith. S.O. Maddie Smith. Yes. Uh, the podcast you want to download is that time of the week. OK, and uh, I see this tweet right now. I will be in L.A. in one month. Yes, it's true. She says, I'm an L.A. 10 and an NYC 10 because I'm on Lexapro and everywhere I go, I'm a 10 now. Yay. Yeah. Good for you. I'm always walking on air when you got that <laughs> serotonin. How long have you been on Lexapro? Uh, it's been like a month now. Well, I was on it before. And then long story short, couldn't get a hold of my doctor when the pandemic started. You remember, you remember the early pandemic? It was like, don't come in unless you have. Yeah. So it was like, I, I, I got off Lexapro. And then all of quarantine uh, was like, oh, maybe I'm fine without it. And then mm. one month into stand up coming back, I was like, I'm losing my mind. So I had to get back on it. Lots of emotional triggers that come with being a performer. Mm. What's yeah. a what's a main one? Like what what triggers the most? Probably just like the scrolling and being like, oh, they got that. Even though I my life is full of abundance, you know, just like. Right triggered by other people's wealth and you're like what the hell is your issue you got right. toxic thoughts i don't need to be raw dogging the world right now <laughs> i have a letter here uh dear maddie should i try lexapro love jessica jessica absolutely lexapro <laughs> and weed will get you really far in life <laughs> uh that's it thanks for supporting the show uh everybody uh when you use our uh, sponsors of course that keeps the show going and we make it easy. Go to keithandthegirl.com slash coupons. Check that out. See if there's something that uh, you're going to buy anyway. And slash coupons gives you a discount and uh, and is good for us. All right. Uh, Maddie, great to see you again. Congrats on everything. Thank you, guys. Great to see both of you. And congrats on the vaccine. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>